And so everybody, if you can open up your Jump Pro 15. Once you have it open, does everybody have it open? Let me turn on my thing. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to download the, the file that I gave you. Again, this is 74 data sets or bio sets that are looking at changes in gene expression. We can kind of look at here. So, so basically go to file, go to open, and wherever you downloaded that, that file that I gave you, please just click on it and open it up. And I'll just what, kind of explain this. So go ahead, does somebody have a question? I was just gonna say, what would be the indication that we've downloaded the file and it's correctly in the workspace and there's no issues with licensing? What, what should we be seeing? You should see this, this file right here. You should see numbers and basically what I have are column headers with the different variables associated with it. So all our bio, our bio sets are on rows. And I've actually included zero. So we have 74 and you know, it's always nice to have everything's coming from control values at zero time point, you know, all the change is zero. <laughs> so, so I have included zeros on here just to make the graphing look a lot better. But this is, this is actually what you're looking at. So again, all my bio sets are in on my rows. And this is, you know, if you're going to do bioinformatics, I would say this is probably the format you want your stuff in. That you want all your variable, you want your samples in the rows and your variables in the column. And again, here are all our variables here. We can see all the different ones we've got day post-infection, different age groups, different viral strains, different initial dose, study names, bio set, species that we use, the amount of samples in each condition, um, how many genes were differentially expressed, where that data set came from. So this is the actual geo ID link. So you can go get the raw data if you'd like. Um, again, viral strain, what sample we came from, what was the host strain of the, the mouse, the sex of the mouse, again, host age, technology we used, and the lab it came from. And again, over here, so we'll have, I think it's about 10,000, over 10,000 columns of just genes. Again, these are our variables. Does everybody understand that? Hi, okay. I had a question. Did, was this derived from the stuff on your, uh, the GitHub? Was this, the, this data, was this like combined from the GitHub stuff or is that? Yeah, different... totally. So how did you, how'd you know about the GitHub stuff? Well, I watched the videos and I, um, I am familiar with R. So I was looking at the GitHub stuff in R earlier this weekend. Oh, cool. Nice. Yes. This is pretty much, we've actually filtered this a little more. So uh, if, if you wanted the most up-to-date uh, version of this database base, I would use this one here. Yep. Cool. All right. We got some R people. <laughs> All right. So we've got this information and I realize, and that's the thing is, this is very easy to use software. And that's particularly one of the reasons why I picked it and also because it's free out of um, from the university. So that that helps as well. So there's all kinds of tutorials out there. Again, this is being recorded. I also do give others on my YouTube channel that you can also use. Um, you know, I always, you know, when I teach this stuff, it's, it's all like, I don't know if, if you've ever played those RPG games, you know, where the single shooters where you're, you know, you go through this world and you're, you know, you start off and you're punching monsters and then, oh, hey, I found a knife and now you're stabbing monsters and you find a gun. You know, Excel is kind of like finding a knife. You know, it's, it's good for a lot of things, but like this is a gun. Like Jump is a great program to use and it's very easy and you don't have to program or you can program and actually use this itself. So if anybody's heard of SAS, I don't know if anybody's out there is familiar with the SAS programs. This is the GUI version of that. I mean, it's very kind of geared toward engineers, but at least the Jump version is very, very easy to use. And that's why I'm using this. So we have our data set. Um, hopefully most of you have been able to open it. Um, 
And for those that don't, just follow along. Again, this is going to be recorded. I, I will put this on my YouTube channel, so you'll be able to get it there as well. Um, so what we want to do is now we want to investigate this. And the easiest way to do this, if you go up to your header under graphs, there's graph up here. I want you to click on graph builder. So click on it right now. Okay, does everybody see a screen like this? Nice, okay, cool. So this is our variables. I'm gonna get this out of the way. Okay, so these are our variables. Let me get this out of the way. So now what we can do is we can look at this and let, what, what I wanna do is re recreate that graph that gave us all the different variables. So what I definitely wanna do, um, if, if you're doing any kind of graphing or, or time course work, you, your days, you know, any, any time period usually ends up going on your X axis. So all I'm doing is I'm taking, if you look at this menu up here, right, this graph builder, I'm taking a day post-infection, the ordinal. So this is the continuous variable pay, day post-infection. We'll use that later. But what I want is just take this or, ordinal, ordinal and put it on the X axis. Okay. And these are the number, basically all these dots represent the numbers of samples in that particular uh, time point. Now, I don't really wanna look at points here. I would rather look at graphs. So up here on my graph builder, so you'll see all these different kind of graphs up here. What I want is the bar graph and you'll see it. There's a line, you'll see a line here and there's this mountain looking thing under area. What I want is the bar. So what I want you to do is click on that once. Okay, hopefully everybody's done it. So now we have the number of bio sets in each one of those different time points. And as we can see, we probably the most information we have, or at least the most bio sets we have is in day two and day four. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to subdivide this by the age group. And if we look down here again, go to the left side, the third one down, you'll see age group. Again, click on it, hold it, and drag it over to the top. Okay, did everybody do that? What do we do if we accidentally grab, dragged it into the, the same spot as before? <laughs> <laughs> then drag it out <laughs> okay. or what you can always do. So, so that is a nice thing is if you ever want to get back to your data set, if you go to the right side of this, this will get you back to your data set. And then you could just basically, you could do it again. You could do another graph builder or what I also have is I'm, if you get lost at some point, everything we're going to do today, I've basically put in the program for that. So all you have to do, if you read these, graphs here, like the first thing we're gonna do is biosets. If you hit this green thing, it'll basically generate that graph for you. So if you ever get lost, go to your main data webpage and you can just click on these, these arrows and it'll basically generate the graph for you. But what I'm gonna do is show you how to do that, okay? So, and then again, if you ever get like say, like you mess up somewhere or you can't figure out if you like dragged it in the wrong place, you can always start over pretty easy to get where you were going. Okay. All right. So now we've got a graph by age. Now here's what I want to do is I want to include the different strains of viruses we used. Again, this is a very important variable. So if we look down, the fourth one down, you see SARS strain. I want you to highlight that, click on it, and drag it over to overlay. And your graph should look like this. Now, I, I don't really wanna look at, I think this is a bad way. I mean, all these little things are like low, you know, skinny, Here's what I want to do is I'm going to go to the left under my bar section, under my um, graph builder, 
and you'll see this first thing. This gives you options to display this. So you'll see this bar style. What I want to do instead of side by side, I'm going to say I want it stacked. Much better to look at. Okay. I'm going to go down here, the mean summary statistic, that's fine. But here's what I want to do is when I when I, I'm going to go down to label, right? It says no labels here. I'm going to say, I'm going to pick the second one. I'm going to say, I'm going to label by value. So now we have numbers attached to the actual sections. So in this one, we've have 11 different bio sets, but 10 of them were the more severe type and one was the bat SRBD. Does everybody understand that? Okay, cool. All right, now we have this. Again, we're looking at the variables here. Um, you'll notice we do have the, the zero one in here, which is something I created. I wanna get rid of those. So what we can do, and this is really nice about this program is we can filter on the fly. So what I'm going to do right now, what I want you to do is go to the header, click on, you'll see file, edit tables, and then rows, click on rows. All the way to the bottom is this data filter. And if you highlight any of this, it'll tell you exactly what it does. So I'm gonna hit filter. Click on that. Now this window comes up on the right. What I wanna do is I wanna filter based on days post-infection. So you've got two of them here. I'm gonna click my ordinal because it's a lot easier to filter on. Just trust me on this. So double click on that. And then this window comes up. Is everybody with me? I hope so. Looks a little different on Windows. So I'm trying, I don't know if anyone else has found the double click spot. Um, I'm just double clicking on it. I don't know if. Yeah, Sarah, I just double clicked the day post infection ordinal and then I had a new pop up that has a data filter at the top. And then, um, yeah, do you see that? Too? Yes, I just got it. Thanks. Cool. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm using a Mac and hopefully it is not too different than your Windows version, but I'm sure there might be some differences. And if, if so, hopefully you all can help each other out. Um, again, you know, once you start playing around with this, this might seem like a difficult program, but it's, it's very, very easy compared to all the other ones. You know, I'm not making you like take script or like do Perl or C++. So this is, this is a lot easier. So now what I want to do is, now that I have this window up, day post-infection, I'm going to say I want to include these. So I'm going to click my include button. I'm going to hit my control. I'm going to hold my control button, or if you're using a Mac, command button. And I'm going to select all the time points except zero. So I click down here, I'm getting two, four, seven. And right now, since it's selecting it, so it's giving these kind of dash lines. If you don't want those, you can just click off that and it'll go away. So now you can see the zero time point is now gone. Is everybody? How did you get rid of the dash lines? They really bother me. That's why I ask. I know it's more of like a... Yep. Uh, all, yep. No, just go to like in some of this empty space and just click somewhere. Like I can like ah, hold it. that, but if, if you just go to like the empty space, it's gone. Professor, could you go through the, uh, the filter step one more time? Sure. Okay. So let me start over. Go to rows. I go to my data filter. I click on that. Here it's giving me variables to filter on. I hit my day post infection. It's the second one down. I double click on that. I now have different time points. Let me get this out of the way. I put my include on. 
And then I either hold down control or your command if you're using your Mac and I just select all the time points that I wanna use. And I wanna use everything except the zero. And since I've clicked on them, you can see that now they've got these, it's kind of dashed on here. So what I wanna do is get rid of that. So I just find an empty spot on my graph and I click there. Awesome, thank you so much. Yep. And again, remember this is recorded. You can, there's plenty of like jump uh, tutorials out there that'll kind of teach you how to do this. Okay, so now what we want to do, we can actually include another variable. So hopefully everybody's graph looks like this. Go up to the top. So we're going to the left. You, this window will, you can go all the way down and up. You can do anything you want here. What I now want to do is go to viral dose. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it. I highlight it, I drag it all the way to this group Y over here, and I put that down. I can drag it out if I want to, or I put it back in, I could put it up top if I wanted, but I'm putting it to the right. Now what we see is that we have, you know, now we've subdivided our, our data set even more, and we can really see this, right? Here was our original graph, now, you know, here are all the animals associated with each age group. Now we can kind of subdivide that by the initial viral dose we gave those animals. And you could see there was an experiment here where they used, you know, different time points, but then they went 100, uh, 1,000, 10,000, then finally 100,000 PFUs. So now we have subdivided. So this is basically showing you that these are the variables associated with your data set. And that was the original uh, graph that I showed you. If you are not here at this point, what you can do is again, you can go back to your data set, original data set, and I can say show data table. Right, I go back to this. And all I have to do to if I want to make that graph, I've recorded that and it's very easy to record these things and you can read about that. But all I do is I'm going to hit this top one, number of biosets by uh, days post-infection, age, strain, and dose, dose, and I can click on that. And now I have the same graph. And we can manipulate this anything we want. We can take that out. We can put it back in. If I want to copy this data set, and put it for a graph. And again, so your homework's gonna be, I want you to make a graph, some type of graph. Um, what I would do is I would take my cursor and I would put it, I'm putting it to the side of the graph and I'm going to right click. I go down here, if you go down a little bit, you see this graph spacing color, you can do all kinds, you can you know, alter this any way you want. But what I can do is I can go down to copy picture. And I just click on that. And then I can go to say a PowerPoint program, go all the way to the end. Bold, and I could just paste, so control V or whatever you wanna use. That's how easy it is to take a graph and then put it somewhere else. Okay, I hope everybody's still with me. Um, we're kind of running out of time and I want to make sure I get to some other things, but let me close this out. Um, but again, we can do, we can recreate that feature size. So if I go to my main data table, I go to the second one down, I click this green arrow. And now we have that feature. Again, these are the genes that are different in the, each individual time point with, based on age group. And so adult is red, young is blue, and aged would be green. And for this instance, what we would want to do is we'd want to put in the zero. So I can go to my data filter window and just control and click on the zero. And now we got the zero point in again. Again, we're showing that. And as you can see at that day one point, and this is what I find fascinating, and this is why we look at data like this, is that you can see these old individuals 
are expressing way more genes at that one hour time point than the young. And this is the more severe the strain gets, the more greater this difference gets. And when we look at this data set, this time one time point is, is very interesting. What you're almost seeing is like a delayed response in the old or the young, which somehow, you know, they handle this virus better. So somehow this is better for them than this actual massive initial response that you're getting in the old. We can change this any way we want. If I wanted to, I could say, all right, I can put this and on here and I could add other different things. I could say, I wanna see age groups. I can, so the third one down, I'm gonna double click on age group and get that group going. So I, I can filter based on this and I can also, I'm gonna put an and and I, so the fourth one down, one, two, three, four, I'm gonna hit SARS strain, double click on that. Right, so now we have this. What I can do now is I could say, all right, I only wanna look at the adult animals. That's our, like most, we have the most animals in that age group. So I can hit adult animals. Remember I'm hitting my, I'm leaving on my control. So I, I put on my control and it selects the adult ones. Now I can say, now I only wanna see the adult and I only wanna see the most severe strains of the SARS virus. So I can click on that. So this is what it's doing in adult animals with the most severe type of virus. You can see the change in gene expression. Our highest change in gene expression is at two days. And so my opinion would be that you know, if, if you really, if you only wanted to focus on one time point, especially the initial, this is probably a really good one, the, the two hour time point. What we can also do, again, go to the left under graph builder, the one, two, three, four, fifth one down, it says viral dose PFU. I can grab this and I can pull this over and I will put it Instead of the overlay, the age group in this right-hand corner, I'm gonna put viral dose. So now what we're doing is we're seeing what these, this, these things are doing. We're looking at, so if we look here, this is increasing viral dose. We can see that the higher the initial virus that you're infecting with, the greater the response. And you almost you see like- could you do that last step, please? Sure. So we're here. I have filtered my data set, so I'm only Great. looking at adult animals. I am only looking at the most severe type. And then what I do is I take my viral dose. I highlight it on the left. Mm -hmm. I drag it over and put it in the overlay box. Okay. You can put it in a color, but that's... It does, you want really want the overlay. So I'm putting it on the overlay and now we get this graph. Thank you. And you can see as we increase in initial virus, the more pronounced the expression is and the earlier it gets. And as you can see here in our most concentrated form of virus that we we're initially exposing these, vi these mice to is much higher than these other ones. And we go, the green one seems to be higher than the other ones, et cetera, et cetera. We can take this, we can change this any way we want. How did you add the error bars? Um, I hit that thing at the beginning, but if you go down here to points, you'll see error interval and yours might say auto. So it's probably not showing anything. So if you go to under points, so here's your line. These are all the things you can alter with your line. If you go to points here, under error interval, you just select what you want. And I've selected standard error, and then that pops up. And you can also see that I've selected this line graph here. So do you have to um, select that uh, error or that standard error bar option for each um, inoculation, like uh, volume of, of that the mouse was inoculated with? 
no, you should not. So when I take that and I throw it over here, the error bar should all come up. So if I take viral dose and I put that as an overlay, you still see the error bars on all the other ones. Some of these don't have error bars because right. it was only so, one bio set. So okay. anything with an error bar had more than one bio set at that particular, for that particular point. But you can still compare them like apples to apples, even though they don't have like the same uh, bio set. I don't know if that's the right. Yeah, I mean, some of them have different replicates, but remember all these bio sets at a very minimum, each had three animals compared to three animals. Okay. So even if you're looking at this point, it isn't one animal, right? It's actually three animals versus at least three animals. Okay, that's the In part I case, remember because yeah. I was like, well, how can we yeah. even be plotting something if we only have like an N of one? So Sure, yeah, This okay. these aren't, remember this is metadata. So what we're actually doing is the, the raw data is compared and all we're doing is taking from the three animals versus the three animals. We're taking the change in gene expression for that. And okay. remember there was a p-value associated with it. So you know that there was more than three animals per condition. Yes. Okay. Now I'm connecting the dots. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I like that connecting the dots. Very <laughs> good analogy. All right. So this is basically, this is kind of how we, you know, this is like, like I said, we haven't even gotten into the genes, you know, and now we're looking at, you know, we're, we're just looking at the metadata itself. What is the data telling us? Well, you know, based on the PCA plots, the, um, I think we did a very good job combining the data. You can see that the days post-infection seem to kind of be very similar to each other, regardless of what study they came from. We're also seeing that the more, uh, deleterious the virus, the, high, the more genes that get differentially expressed. Okay. Everybody see that? What are, what are your, like, what are the different colored lines representing here? So I did an overlay. When I put the overlay on, the different colors of lines are the viral dose. And over here, you can see this would be a hundred. So this is the lowest amount of virus used to infect the mice and then it just increases exponentially. Yeah, I might be trying to, I might need to figure something out, but when I do that, it, set, it shows overlay viral dose and then it just doesn't put the different lines. Really? Yeah, but I don't know, we can move on, it's okay. <laughs> okay, what you can also do is put it here if you wanna see it as like different, like viral thing. I mean, it, you know, you can see it this way as well. I just like to take it and put it so I can overlay the, the data. All right, well, let's, let's do a, a very simple thing. So let's, let's start over. So we're still on our, so here's what I want you to do is let's clear our data filters. So go to your data filter. If you can't find it, you can always, you know, just go to rows, hit data filter and find it again. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hit clear. Okay, so now we have no filters on at all but I'm gonna keep this handy because we'll probably use this. So now what we can do is we can just go, we could say, hey, let's just start over. So I'm gonna do start over. You can, you, you have this undo here. You have all kinds of different variables that you can choose here. I'm just gonna hit start over. 